So Ananta has left the meeting. Even uh, the Sai Ram. Hmm? Okay. So you don't want to talk to me, man. Ravid? Sir, I was uh, absent in last class. Sir. You are absent in the last class. Okay. To say that, you need so much of time. To say you are absent. Hmm? You should no, express now. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. What about others? Those who are present and said that they will communicate to me. Yes, I hope you understand. You people have promised me that you will communicate with me. Don't want to talk to me. Yes. You want me to name it? Oh, no response. Okay. Okay, fine. Then uh, let me continue where I have left. Okay. Okay. Okay, so actually I was started with the basics of uh, probability and all, right? I told what is a random variable space and all. So let me just, uh, okay, just I will, uh, yeah, I will start with this random process. Okay. So is this uh, visible, no? random processes? Yes, my slide is visible. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, without uh, just saying what I thought in the previous class, let me begin with this random processes. Okay, because I'm not getting any response. See, to be happy, both the hands should be clapped. Then only we can hear some sound, right? Only one side communication and saying, always talk to me, discuss, ask questions, will not help. Right? Okay, uh, so it is my fate what to do. Fine, so in the random processes, okay, so the statistical analysis of the communication systems means we, actually with noise we do this, okay. So statistical analysis of noise, statistical analysis of communication systems is the characterization of the random signals. So what are the random signals? Voice signals, television signals, computer data, electrical noise, they're all the random signals. Okay, we need to, if, I, if at all I want to do the statistical analysis of any communication system, I need to do the characterization of these random signals first. Okay, then to understand what are the properties of these random signals, we say there are two properties. One is the signals are functions of time. Okay. Signals are functions of time. Means we will be defining the signals. Okay. On some observation interval. Okay. That is the signals are functions of time. We say the second thing is the signals are random. Okay. In the sense that so before conducting an experiment, it is not possible to describe exactly the waveforms that will be observed. That is why we say the signals are random. Okay. So these are the two characteristics or properties of the random signals. Okay. So as I said, uh, for the statistical analysis of the communication system, we need to characterize the random signals. What are those random signals? I said voice signal, television signal, uh, computer data and electrical noise, etc. Okay. Uh, I said there are two uh, properties of the random signals. One is the signals are functions of time, means we define that on some observation of the interval. Second thing is the signals are random. To say that uh, the signals are random, we will not be, or it is not possible to describe exactly the waveform that will be observed 
before conducting the experiment. So in that way, we say the signals are random. Okay. So in uh, describing the random signals, we have observed that each sample point in our sample space is a function of time, right? So the sample space, or uh, it is also known as ensemble, okay, that consists of functions of time that we call it as a random process or the st stochastic process, okay? So if we ask what do you mean by random process, we should be able to define like this. It is a, a sample space or ensemble which consists of what? Functions of time that we call it as a random process or the stochastic process. For example, here, see, this is my sample space, right? In that sample space, I have, these are the different uh, uh, sample points, okay, S1, S2, S3, and so on up to Sn. See, outcome of the experiment, right? Uh, we denote it as what? X1 of t, because I said the random process is a function of time, right? So X1 of t, X2 of t, X3 of t, and so on, uh, up to Sn of t, we say. Right? So this is the outcome of the first trial of the experiment. And this one is the outcome of the second trial of the experiment. And so on, we say this is the outcome of the nth trial of the experiment. Okay. Yes, uh, is this clear what I'm saying? Yes, I'm asking yes. people only, is this clear what I said? So to say or to illustrate an ensemble, of sample of functions, this is what I say. So sample space, the sample point are functions of the time that we call it as a random process. So that is what is written here. Means if we consider a random experiment, right, specified by the outcomes S, right, from sample uh, space S by the events defined on the sample space, right, and by the probabilities of these events, right. So we assign to each sample point S as a function of what? Time in accordance with that rule. So X of T we write, comma S, this S we ignore while writing uh, to simplify the writing, okay? So that is what is written here. Okay. So that we call it as a random variable, right? So then uh, we have an uh, ensemble, right? Of the random variables that is X of T which is known as the random process, okay? So as I said, to simplify the notation, we just write X of T to denote the random process, okay? So we can define the random process as an what? Ensemble of time functions together with the probability rule that assigns the probability to any meaningful event associated with the observation of one of the sample functions of the random process. So this is what the definition of the random process. Okay. So then in what way we say the random variable is different from random process. So for random variable, we say the outcome of the random experiment is mapped onto the number. Okay. But for random process, outcome of the random experiment is mapped into the waveform that is a function of time. So this is the difference between random variable and the random process. Fine. So if I ask, you people should be able to say what is the difference between random variable and the random process. So what I said, the random variable is the outcome of a random experiment that is mapped onto a number. Okay. And random process is the what? Outcome of the random experiment that is mapped into waveform, which is a function of time. Okay. So these are the three uh, important uh, definitions. One is mean, second one is uh, correlation, and third one is the covariance functions. Okay. For any statistical analysis of a communication system, we need to understand the definition of these three things. Okay. So if I consider the random process X of T, and we can define the mean of that process X of T as the what? Expectation of the random variable obtained by observing that process at some time T. Okay. So how do we denote that? Mathematically, we denote uh, that mean of a random process X of T as mu 
So if it's x of t is equal to e is the expectation operator, right? So e of x of t. So by definition, right? So I can say it is integral from minus to infinity x into f x of t into x into dx it is, right? So what is this one? f x of t into x is the probability density function of the process at time t. Okay, f x of t x is the what? Probability density function of the process at time t. Okay, so to say the random process is a stationary to the first order, right? If the distribution function of x of t does not vary with time, then we say it is a stationary process. Okay, so the density uh, functions for the random variables x of t1 and x of t2 means it is at a different time intervals can be written as like this. So f x of t1 of x is equal to f x of t2 x2 means uh, the probability density function will not vary with time. Then we say it is a stationary. Okay. Is it fine? Yes, I'm asking, is this fine? When do we see if I use the word stationary, you people should, uh, means it should come to your mind that the random process of the first order of the distribution function does not vary with the time. Okay. So we say mu x of t is equal to mu x for all the values of t. Okay. Then how do we define the autocorrelation function? Okay. So the autocorrelation function of the process x of t has the expectation of the product of two random variables, that is x of t1 and x of t2. Okay? So product of uh, the two random variables, that is the expectation of uh, the product of two random variables is the autocorrelation function we say. So which is uh, uh, obtained or mathematically we can express as or x of t1 comma t2. So which is equal to there is expectation, right? E of x of t1 and x of t2. Right. So I already said what is the definition of E of x of t1. Similar to that, so we write the in terms of integral, right? So integral from minus infinity to infinity, right? Two integrals x1, x2, f x of t1, right? X of t2 into x1 comma x2 into dx1 into dx2. So this is the definition of autocorrelation function we said. And since here two uh, random variables are there, right? Uh, so we call that as a joint probability density function of the random variables. That is f x of t1 comma x of t2, right? We call that as a joint probability density function. Okay, similar to the previous one, here also to say the random process x of t is stationary to second order, if that joint distribution function, right, depends only on the difference between the observation times t1 and t2. Then we say that this process is stationary. Okay. So autocorrelation function of a stationary random process depends only on the time difference t2 minus t1. So which can be written as rx of t1 comma t2 is equal to rx of t2 minus t1 for all the values of t1 and t2 we say. Okay. So this is the autocorrelation function. So it is the product of what? expectation of the product of two random variables is the autocorrelation function. That is what you people should understand here. Yes. Similar to that, we say the autocovariance function okay, of a stationary random process x of t will be written as, so covariance function is denoted by c suffix x of t1 comma t2, which is equal to expectation of x of t1, it's first random variable minus the mean of that then x of t2 minus the mean of that variable. So we can write it as rx of t2 minus t1 minus mu x square. Okay. Fine. So we say the random process is said to be wide sense stationary, right? When do we say? When those equations, the 559 and 561, all is said to be wide sense stationary. So 59 and uh, t1 is this. Yeah. Okay. This is a 59 means it is constant. Okay. The random process is constant, right? For all values of D. And 61 is 60 is this. That is autocorrelation function. Okay. 
so these are the properties of the auto correlation function so let me skip this right now i, I don't think it is required yeah, i think i discussed about this also okay how the auto correlation function is what is the physical significance of the auto correlation function okay so it provides what i said a means of describing the interdependence of the two random variables okay obtained by observing the random process at a times tau seconds apart okay so that is the physical uh, significance of the auto correlation function yeah i think this also i discussed how do we find the uh, auto correlation function of the sinusoidal signal okay with random phase so i took the sinusoidal signal with random phase which is defined as what x of t is equal to a cosine of 2 pi of ct plus theta right so this phase right a is the con amplitude and fc these, these two are the constant amplitude and frequency only the phase is random variable i'm considering here and that is uniformly distributed over this interval that is from minus pi to pi so i can find out or i can define the probability density function that is pdf of that random phase as like this that is f theta of theta is equal to 1 by 2 pi over the interval minus pi to pi and it will be zero everywhere so i can find out what is the auto correlation function of that okay by using this formula that is i said auto correlation function is the what product of uh, the two random process occurring at different times t1 and t2 right so one i said here t plus tau and another x of t so just i'm substituting multiplying simplifying that okay applying the basic uh, rule that is uh, uh, here i think if i multiply it is what uh, cos a cos b okay we'll be able to simplify and say we get this as the auto correlation function that is a square by 2 cosine of 2 pi fc tau so which is drawn here okay so what we can say is this is the auto correlation function of the sinusoidal signal with random phase yes okay then uh, so similar to this i said one more signal which is a binary signal which is randomly uh, means uh, more predominantly used in our digital communication also you should have the idea how do you find the auto correlation function of this binary signal okay so just you can have a look about this and i said the auto correlation function of as a binary signal will be what a triangular function okay so i think till this i was there in the previous class. Okay, so I hope uh, you understand this, the autocorrelation function of a binary signal having a magnitude of uh, plus one and minus one will be equal to what? A triangular signal, okay, which lies over the interval from minus t to plus t. Yes, uh, am I clear from my side? Hello? Hello. Everybody has might have left for uh, breakfast. Is it so? To bear? Yes, sir. Hmm. All are there. Okay. So is it fine? Whatever I am discussing, is it fine? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is another important uh, uh, word which we all need to understand what it is. Okay, it is a power spectral density. Okay, so which is used at so many places and uh, so many points. So how do we define this power spectral density? Okay, so the power spectral density is uh, is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. Okay. It is the what Fourier transform of the Auto correlation function. I'm just highlighting. It's known as the power spectral density of the random process x of t. Okay. 
so i am not going through what it is and all i'm saying just i am saying what is the power spectral density of a random process x of t what i said it is the fourier transform of the auto correlation function that we call it as a power spectral density which is denoted as sx of f okay so how do we define that the power spectral density sx of f and the auto correlation function rx of tau of a wide sense stationary random process x of t form the fourier transform pair with f1 tau as the variables we say so we can define like this that is sx of f is equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity r x of tau so this is the what auto correlation function into e power minus j 2 pi f tau into d tau so it is as per the definition of fourier transform okay so s x of f is equal to this and uh, r x of tau that is auto correlation function no? so it is uh, inverse fourier transform of the power spectral density so we can write it as what integral from minus to infinity s x of f into e power j 2 pi f tau into d f i hope uh, this clear so power spectral density of a random process is the what fourier transform of the auto correlation function of the uh, auto correlation function okay so that is known as the power spectral density yeah just for example here we are finding what is the uh, auto correlation function of the sinusoidal signal with random phase so same example what i have taken in the previous example that is a cosine of 2 pi of ct plus theta we know it's a uh, auto correlation function is a square by 2 into cos of 2 pi of c tau so what is the fourier transform of this so we know the fourier transform of cosine of 2 pi of c tau will be what del of f minus fc plus del of f plus fc right so i can write the power spectral density of a sinusoidal signal will be like this that is uh, a square by 4 you will get right because it is 1 by 2 of uh, del of f minus fc plus del of f plus fc so that is why we get s x of f is equal to a squared by 4 into del of f minus fc plus del of f plus fc okay so this is the power spectral density of the sinusoidal signal with random phase yes is there any doubt in this we are using these things at so many places at uh, even in next semester next semester also that is why i am saying all these things i am stressing on this if i say what is the power spectral density of a sinusoidal signal it should come to your mind that two impulse functions one is at uh, plus fc another one is at minus fc having a magnitude of a squared by 4 okay yeah i think uh, this gaussian process uh, as of now i will skip this and you know not uh, yeah at least you should know what is this uh, Gaussian random variable and how do we define it because this is also very uh, many times it is used okay so we define or we characterize the Gaussian random variable okay with the Gaussian random variable as y with the Gaussian distribution with the probability density function in this form so f y of y is equal to 1 by square root of 2 pi sigma y so sigma is the what it is the standard deviation right e power minus okay, y minus that is it is the mean that whole square divided by 2 sigma squared y okay sigma squared y is the variance and mu suffix y is the mean okay this is the mean and this one is the variance right? this is also should be there in your mind you okay, have the random variable y so gaussian distribution means it should come this equation should come to your mind that is 1 by root of 2 pi sigma y e power minus y minus sigma y whole square divided by 2 sigma square okay. i think uh, this you might have seen many times this is a normalized gaussian distribution we also call it as a bell curve okay because it is in the shape of bell right so this is uh, more widely used for understanding the bit error rate okay so that is why i am showing this what is the Gaussian distribution. Okay, so these are all just basics. Whatever I have shown, this so these should, these things should be there in your mind. Okay, you might have studied these things in mathematics also. So in addition to that, just I am revising. So actual topic starts from this in the second module. So whatever I discussed so far, mean, 
uh, auto correlation okay the random process even finding auto correlation function power spectral density are all basic things just i said as a revision okay so let us see what uh, the next topic is that is noise so you all know what it is how do we define a noise so it is an unwanted waves right that will be disturbing the transmission and processing of the signals in the communication system right yes sir no so what we say noise is an unwanted wave right that will be disturbing the transmission and processing of the signals in the communication system so then what are the sources of noise okay we broadly classify the sources of noise into two categories one is the external to the system and second one is the internal to the system so under the category of external to the system we say the source of noise as atmospheric noise right galactic noise then man made noise right so any one of you give examples of man made noise i think this type of examples you should be able to give yes quickly i expect some response man made noise yes students hello yes manasa sh yes sir yeah you respond no? can you give some examples of man made noise sir just like that clapping making noise man made hmm. noise okay there is a man made noise then what about other atmospheric noise sir thunder ah yeah lightning and all sir lightning yeah lightning thundering and all right what about galactic noise yes other people can take up not only manasa i just called her yes Yes, Norin. No, Norin. Okay, Prajwal. Yes, sir. Hmm. Can you give sir, some example? Galactic noise. Galactic noise. noise. Yeah. It's similar to thermal noise. Pardon? Like like the cosmic noise. Cosmic noise. Yeah. Yeah. Can you repeat once again? So galactic noise is uh, the yeah. cosmic noise. Okay. What about Prajwal? It originates like outside the Earth's atmosphere. Okay. Okay. So the uh, galactic noise is like emitted by uh, uh, uh space other than Earth, like space bodies. They emit okay. some kind of a frequency, like some kind of a wave, which if you like listen closely, it's it's a it has a sound to it. with a very okay. high frequency okay. so we don't have any control over these noise right so it will happen isn't it or do you have any control over these things no sir no no yeah so that is one okay one source of noise is the what i said external to the system another one is what internal to the system so that arises from the spontaneous fluctuations of the current or voltage in the electrical circuits okay so to certain extent even uh, we don't have much control over this also but we will be able to minimize this noise and this is very much uh, uh, annoying the system performance okay the noise which is uh, generated in internal to the system okay so let us see so the, this noise means the internal to the system noise is the basic limitation on the transmission or detection of the signals in the communication systems okay so which involves the use of these electronic devices okay so just to give an example as i said uh, the internal to the system noise arises from the what spontaneous fluctuations of the current or voltage in the electrical circuits so the examples are we can say one is the short noise and another one is the thermal noise Yeah, so these are the two examples of the spontaneous fluctuations in the electrical circuits. 
okay so in a nutshell so uh, so many times they ask what is noise so you should be able to define the proper definition of noise what we can say is it is an unwanted wave okay that will be disturbing the transmission and processing of the signals in the communication systems okay yeah so let us consider the uh, noise which is generated due to the spontaneous fluctuations of uh, voltage or current right that is we said the short noise so how do we define this so short noise arises in electronic devices like uh, diodes and the transistors okay, because of the discrete nature of current flow in these devices okay, how do we say it is a discrete nature of current flows in the diodes or transistors anyone can give other than this example i have taken here one is a photo detector and another one may be the photo transistor also we can take so other than this i said the short noise arises in electronic devices right like uh, such as diodes and transistors because of the discrete nature of current flow in these devices okay first let me tell about this photo detector you all studied i think in basic electronics how photo detector works right and how photo transistor works also right so in a photo detector circuit what is happening the current pulse will be generated every time the electron is emitted by the cathode right how the electron will be emitted by the cathode that will be emitting due to the incident of light from the source okay of constant intensity we say right so what i said in a photo detector circuit the current pulse will be generated every time an electron is emitted by the cathode okay that is due to the incident light from the source of the constant intensity i hope uh, this you understand and already studied right so these current pulses are discrete in nature right so the electrons which are naturally emitted at random times which are denoted by tau suffix k so i am denoting that by tau suffix k where the value of k, k can extend from minus infinity to plus infinity okay and uh, we are assuming that the random emissions of these electrons have been going on for a long time okay so the total current flowing through the photo detector may be modeled as an infinite sum of current pulses okay so that will be expressed mathematically as means this is a random process right so x of t will be equal to summation uh, from minus infinity to infinity h of t minus tau k here, here the value of k varies from minus infinity to infinity okay so this h of t minus tau k is the current pulse generated at time tau k okay so we call this x of t is the stationary process and it is known as the short noise Yes, sir. do you have any doubts with respect to this slide? How short noise arises? You should be able to say, right? It arises in the electronic devices like diodes, transistors, because of the what? Discrete nature of current flow in these devices. So one example we have taken that is a photo detector circuit. How that current pulse will be generated, and all, right? Then how do we find the total current flowing through the photo detector? Then how do we model that? That we call it as a what the that process is known as the short noise how do we express that mathematically summation from minus infinity h of t minus tau k right so this uh, is the current pulse generated at time tau k yes uh, to just uh, go in depth so what we say if i represent the number of electrons okay the number of electrons by n of t i represent the number of electrons as n of t emitted in the time interval 0 to t okay so the number of electrons i represent by what n of t which are emitted in the time interval 0 to t okay that will form the discrete stochastic process stochastic process or random process are same right okay so the value of that will increase by one each time an electron is emitted right the value of that random process or stochastic process increases by 1 each time an electron is emitted so that is shown in this figure see at tau 1 the one value and then at tau 
So tau one to tau, that value will be there. Then from tau two, it will increase to two. I hope this point is clear, right? At tau one, I am saying it is one, right? At tau two, it will be two. Then at tau three, it will be three. At tau four, it will be four. Then at tau five, it will be five, and so on. At tau six, it will be six. So this is what I am saying. The number of electrons which are denoted by n of t emitted in the time interval zero to t, right? That will be the stochastic process. What we call that as a discrete stochastic process. The value of that increases by one each time an electron is emitted. Okay. So uh, let us uh, find the mean value of that uh, number of electrons. Okay. So I am denoting that as v. Let the mean value of number of electrons v emitted between the time interval t to t plus t naught. Okay. So which is defined as the expectation of v okay, is equal to lambda into t naught v sin, where this lambda is the constant and that we call it as a rate of the process. Lambda is the rate of the process. So the total number of electrons emitted in the interval from t to t plus t naught. Can be written as like this. So v into n of t plus t naught minus n of t. Okay. So and this will follow the Poisson distribution. I think this you might have studied in mathematics. Poisson distribution. Yes, I have studied or not? Yes. Poisson distribution. That is the rate of arrival. Okay. We say the mean value will be equal to what lambda into t naught. We say. Okay, the probability that k electrons are emitted in the interval t to t plus t naught can be defined like this. So p of v okay, with the probability density function k right is equal to this is the standard expression for Poisson distribution. Okay, you can note this. That is lambda t naught to the power of k divided by k factorial into e power minus lambda k. Okay, so this is the Poisson distribution expression. Fine. Okay, so the mean of that random process x of t is defined as so we denote that as mu x right is equal to lambda into integral from minus infinity h of t into dt. So lambda is the what rate of the process and h of t is the waveform of the current pulse. We say h of t is the waveform of the current pulse. Yes, is this clear? This point mean of x of t. Shall I go to the next line? Yes, I'm not saying getting any response. Yes, Is this fine? Yes, sir. Is it all be? okay? Yeah. So the auto covariance already this also we have defined, right? Auto covariance function of the random process can be. Denoted as what c x of tau, which is equal to lambda into integral from minus infinity h of t into h of t plus tau into dt. Means it is occurring at two different time intervals, right? H of t and h of t plus tau. And this we call it as a Campbell's theorem. Yeah. So this is the auto covariance function of the random process. This is all related to the short noise. Yeah. Okay, so if we consider h of t. Okay, it's of t. as I said, it is a waveform, right? If I consider that as a rectangular pulse, okay, of amplitude a and duration t, okay, the mean of that short noise, okay, mean of the short noise process x of t will be equal to this lambda into a t we say, and its autocorrelation function, right? So that is why I said autocorrelation function of a binary pulse, right? So if you remember that, then you will be able to just uh, remove means change the variable and we will be able to write this equation that is cx of tau is equal to lambda into a square of t minus small tau over this interval when tau is less than t and it will be zero above tau is greater than t right so which is what a triangular form so that is why whatever the example i have shown that you need to practice okay to arrive it to this one okay the autocorrelation function of this rectangular pulse will be what? A triangular form, right? Yeah. So if they will ask a short note, 
on these things short noise thermal noise and all so you are all supposed to write this much about the short noise you should say what is short noise okay how it arises and how do we model that okay then uh, this is the sample function as a poison counting process you can say and you should be able to say what is it uh, what is its auto covariance function and what is the auto correlation function of the uh, short noise if we if we take as a uh, rectangular pulse fine okay so next is the thermal noise so thermal noise is the what electrical noise thermal noise is the electrical noise that arises from the random motion of electrons in the conductor okay. so hope we will be able to find the difference between short noise and the thermal noise yes uh, Ananta, can you say short noise arises due to what? Ananta. Yes, Ananta is not there. What about Prithvi? Yes, Prithvi. No, Prithvi. Yes, Grish. Girish, no. Yes, Aditi. Yes, sir. Yeah, how the short noise arises, ma? So when I started this thermal noise, I wanted to ask how, in what way this thermal noise is different from short noise. So I have understood how short noise arises. Yes, short noise. Just now I said no short noise. Sir, it is. Uh, it occurs when there is a potential barrier. Mm -hmm. See, short noise arises in electronic devices like diodes, transistors, said because of what discrete nature of current flow. This is important. Discrete nature of current flow in these devices. How do we say it is a discrete nature of current flow? Because uh, how the current pulse will be generated in case of photo detector. So whenever a light falls on the cathode, right, the electron will be emitted from that. So for each electron, there we say there is one pulse will be generated. That is why we say the discrete nature of current flow. Okay. But what about the thermal noise? Thermal noise is due to what? The random motion of electrons in the conductor. Okay. So due to that, the thermal noise arises. So what is the mean square value of this thermal noise? Okay, that we denote it as V suffix Tn, thermal noise, okay? So which appears across the terminal of the resistor uh, measured in a bandwidth of delta F Hertz is given by this formula, okay? That is what E of V square Tn, that is uh, the mean square value, which is 4 K, 4 K T R into delta F whole square, we said. So delta F is the bandwidth, okay, and K is the Boltzmann constant, and T is the absolute temperature, and R is the resistance, which is measured in ohms. Okay. So you all know what is the value of Boltzmann constant value, okay, which is 1.38 into 10 power minus 23 joules per degree Kelvin. Yes, is this point clear? The thermal noise is the electrical noise arising from the random motion of electrons in the conductor. So how do we define the mean square value of the thermal noise, which is denoted as V suffix Tn, right, across a resistor uh, measured in a bandwidth of delta F as E of V square Tn is equal to 4 KTR delta F volt square. I said K is the Boltzmann constant, T is the absolute temperature, R is the resistance, and delta F is the bandwidth, which is measured in Hertz, okay? So this is the expression for mean square value of the thermal noise voltage. And we can model this uh, noisy resistor by the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. Okay. So the moment we say the Thevenin's equivalent circuit, so what it should come to your mind? You should, it should come to your mind the source, right? Voltage source in series with the resistor. So that is what is written here. Okay. So which consists of what? The noise voltage generator of mean square value 
of what E of P square T n in series with a noiseless resistor. Yeah. So we will be able to model that uh, noisy resistor. What is that noisy resistor? How do we say it is? That is the thermal noise, right? Yes or no? Yeah. So we can model that by using the Thevenin's equivalent circuit by what? The noise generator of uh, what value? Mean square value of E of V square T n in series with a noiseless resistor V set. And uh, once we know how to model that by using Thevenin's, even we can write its equivalent diagram by using the Norton's also, right? So we replace this voltage source by a current source, so which is done here. And parallel to the current source, there will be a resistor, right? So that is what done here. See, the Norton equivalent circuit of that will be what? Noise current generator in parallel with the noiseless conductance we said, right? One by R will be the conductance. Yes, is this point is clear about the thermal noise? I said it is thermal noise arises in the uh, electric is the electrical noise arises what due to the random motion of electrons in the conductor, right? I said how do we denote its mean square value? Then how do we model by using Thevenin equivalent circuit and as well as not an equivalent circuit? So it should be there in your mind the mean square value of that. Uh, thermal noise voltage will be equal to what? E of V square Tn, which is equal to 4 KTR into delta F. 4 KTR into delta F, the unit volt square it is. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of current, we can write uh, I squared is equal to what? Right? So it is what? V by I equal to what? V by R, right? Since it is mean square, so we are directed 1 by R squared into E of that, right? And I can substitute and say in terms of a mean square uh, current will be what? 4 KTZ delta of amp square it is. Earlier, in terms of voltage, it will be 4 KTR delta of. Here, R is replaced by G, the conductance, okay? And it will be amp square as the unit. Okay, and uh, I think we can just have a look about this. What is this? The number of electrons in a resistor is very large and the random motions inside the resistor are statistically independent of each other. So the central limit theorem, I, I hope you know what is the central limit theorem. That will indicate the thermal noise is the Gaussian distributed with zero mean. Okay, so thermal noise is a Gaussian distributed having a mean value of zero. That much you should be able to understand. So this is about the thermal noise. Uh, okay. So another thing is uh, while doing the noise calculations, what we it involves the transfer of power. Okay. Noise calculations involves the transfer of power, and uh, so we find the use of the maximum power transfer theorem here. Yeah, so I hope you all know what is the maximum power transfer theorem says, right? Means the maximum power will be transferred to the load when the source impedance or source internal resistance is equal to the load impedance. That is what the maximum power transfer theorem says. So that is why we say the maximum possible power is transferred from source of internal resistance R to a load of resistance RL when RL is equal to R, right? So the power produced by the source will be divided equally between the internal resistance of the source and as well as the load resistance. Okay, And the power delivered to the load, right? that will be referred as the available power. And uh, we notice that the noisy resistor produces an available noise power, which is equal to Kt delta of watts. Okay. Kt delta, that is the uh, available noise power. What I said, available noise power is the power available at the load, right? So, which is equal to what? Kt into delta F watts. Yeah. So, next one is the white noise. Okay, this is a uh, uh, very, very important and we consider uh, all, almost in uh, all the communication system analysis, the noise is white. Okay, additive white Gaussian noise we say. So the word, the white only says, means it has all uh, colors, right? We all know that white will be having all other colors. 
all other seven colors, right? So the noise analysis of the communication system is based on an idealized form of noise that we call it as a white noise. So the power spectral density of that is independent of the operating frequency. Means it does not depend. The power spectral density of that white noise is independent of the operating frequency we say. Okay. So already I told about this why it is called white and all. So we denote the power spectral density of the white noise with a sample function denoted by W of T as N naught by 2. Okay, this is the power spectral density. Yes, W of F is equal to N naught by 2. And uh, this is the graphical representation of the power spectral density of the white noise. I said it is independent of noise. So as F increases, its value is constant. Okay, which is equal to N naught by 2 only. Okay, so the autocorrelation function of this will be this one. Means it will be a one impulse function which exists at tau equal to zero. And it will be zero when tau is not equal to zero. Okay, this is the autocorrelation function of this white noise. Okay. So the value of N naught, okay. So it is a dimension quantity and uh, which is uh, having a unit of watts per hertz. Fine. Yes, is this fine? I think I will uh, stop with that because uh, 